Y'all see it? Okay. Yes. Okay, good deal. So let's just click to the next one. Okay, we kind of already talked about this, what successful agents do every day, they grow their business, which means you're lead generating for buyers and sellers, you're making seller listing presentations and getting listings, you're making buyer presentations and getting listings and you're previewing real estate, which means that's one of those things in your 4410. Is it, no, it's 1010, whatever it is, 1010, 10, 4, whatever, I don't remember. I've been doing this five years, I don't do the things I'm supposed to do. Um, <laughs> Maybe I should go back to doing the things I'm supposed to do. And then uh, right are, are we doing the negotiating the buyers today? Negotiating contracts, managing the transactions, vendor management. So talking with your lenders, with your title companies. Number six, set some goals. That's what you got to do to run your business. You got to set some goals. You got to know where you're going. Okay. I'm going to move the Zoom window out of my way. Today we're focused, it says we're lead generating for, well, we're going to, we're not lead generating during this class today. Normally y'all make calls during class, but we're not doing that today. Okay, so does everybody know what a database is? Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. maybe. The people in our contacts. Is it telling me a database? That's not what's on my slide. Hold on. I have a question. What class are we doing? I thought it's a negotiate the deal. No, we switched. Rosie and I switched. We're doing setting big goals. Rosie did negotiating the deal back in November. We're doing number five. Yeah, that's why. Setting big like goals. And this is not the right slideshow. Setting this the goals. Database. This is the wrong slideshow. Hold on. Yeah, I need because I print out the different um, different one, and I'm like, it's not in there. <laughs> You were like confused. I'm like, what? Right. yeah, we're not negotiating today. We're supposed to be setting some goals and I don't know why. Oh, that's number four. That's why it says so right there. Okay. And I closed the other window. Dang it. Maybe it's in the, should be in here. Oh, I don't need it open five times. I need to get another print. <laughs> find the right presentation that would help tremendously. A long time ago. <laughs> Never called the right thing. So let's just go back and load it again. Okay. We'll go get the right one. I was really sure I had the right one, but apparently not. So has anybody set goals for themselves for their first year? I haven't. And that's one of the things that I really need to do. And yes, because I haven't set up on command. Apparently you're supposed to set up some goals in command. Is that what, what it is? Well, yeah, you can set your goals in command. And when you set them in command, it will tell you exactly what you need to do. Okay, I haven't done that. If you go into, well, if you're in, are you ever in the office, Maria? Uh, I'm sorry? Are you ever here in the office? Um, yes, I go over there from time to time. Yes, I'm a dual career. Uh, that's what I figured you were probably dual career. Um, yes. Yeah, if you're in here, somebody, whether there's a staff member or Christine, you could set an appointment with Christina and she could do it via Zoom for you. Oh, okay. Um, okay. And show you how to set those up in command. And there's a... Um, there's a calculator in there and we're going to kind of go through it on paper today, but there's a calculator that will tell you exactly how many appointments you need to go on every week. Oh, okay. Oh, that was nice. To, in order to hit your goal. Maybe okay. you need to go on one seller appointment a month to hit your goal. Maybe you need to go on three seller appointments to hit your goal. Oh, I clicked the wrong one. I'm pretty sure I clicked the wrong one. Oh, okay. That's Let's see here if this is the right one. Let's see. So it um, okay. So who Gary? There's a quote from a book called, that Gary wrote called "The One Thing," and it says, "Who we are and where we want to go determine what we do and what we accomplish." So has anybody heard of the book "The One Thing"? Have y'all been around long enough to hear us talk no. about the one thing? 
No, okay. I haven't. The, the, the basis of the one thing is that if you will do the one most important thing, it will make everything else you think you need to do either unnecessary or not needed. You know, you won't need to do it. So if you focus on your lead generation, and basically in the book, he's saying lead generation is your one thing. We are really not agents. We are um, lead generators. Okay. Generate your leads and the business will show up. Set goals that matter. There we go. Now this is going to make more okay. sense. Okay. Yeah, I found it too. I'm going to put it in. There we go. Okay. So envision your big life. We're going to jump right on into, because it does not have all these other slides in here. I don't think. Let me see. There's the, okay, there's the quote. Okay, what, which, which, seg, uh, which seg, uh, session is this? I'm trying to find the, the. Setting goals that matter, it's number five. Number five, okay, thank you. I'm trying to find it over here. Okay. Hold on one second. Okay, so think, act, and achieve. Okay, so there's we've got a little graph here. You've got thinking and your time and your effort. Okay, so some actions lead to small outcomes and some actions lead to big outcomes. So I think you can all agree that if you don't put in time and effort, you're not going to get very far. Business is really just not going to fall in your lap for the most part. Um, so looking at this graph, what else is important to setting and meeting goals? Um, okay, I cannot really see the graph. I, I could oh, see okay. the slides, but cannot. Okay, let me move this over here. Is it because the zoom's in the way? Is that better? I can only see the slides on the side. I mean, I don't know if it's- Yes, the the, Oh, ignite. you're not seeing, I'm showing the wrong screen. Okay. That's why, let me see if I can find the right one. Oh, there we go. Okay, do you see the slide now? Oh, no, no I haven't clicked share yet. There, do you see it oh. now? Oh, okay, yes. Okay, I was showing the wrong screen. <laughs> um, so, um, okay, so what is important to setting and meeting goals? Or actions, I mean. Actions, or... but little actions or big actions? Uh, big actions. Yeah, how big is your box? Is the, you know, you need to ask how big is your box? If you're not thinking big, you're creating an artificial ceiling. Um, and there are only so many hours in the day and there's only so much one person can do with those hours. Mm -hmm. So if you don't think big enough, then you're not going to grow your business big enough. Um, lots of new agents limit themselves right off the bat. They don't call your sphere. You don't tell your friends and your family that you're in real estate. They just hope, hope business will come your way. And I'm going to tell you, hope is not a business strategy. Okay. Um, maybe they aren't, you're not systematic about your lead generation. Maybe you just don't want to learn the scripts that would make it easier. Most of those agents don't stay in the business because they don't, they treat it as a business, don't stay in the business because they treat it as a business or they burn out and they aren't seeing a good return on their time and effort. This chair squeaks a lot. So, you know, we were talking about the one thing. And I said, lead generation, well, your first thing may be as new agents is your one thing, maybe to learn your scripts and you wanna, you wanna learn them. And, and you, here's what everybody says. They say, well, that doesn't sound like me or those words don't feel right coming out of my mouth. Well, that's fine and they don't. The point is to learn them so well that when somebody asks you a question at Starbucks, when you're wearing your name tag, that it just comes out in your words. So you internalize it so that you are confident and it just regurgitates yourself. 
you know, when you, when somebody says, how's the market? Oh, well, it's great. But I mean, are you talking about the buyer market or the seller market? Are you talking about the investor market? Are you talking about buying a home or selling a home? Um, so you just have to, that's probably your first thing. So we're going to do a little activity here. Um, if you don't have your, here's the slide. Let me move the box over so I can see it. And this is not a good, jeez, oh, hold on. Back, back, back. Okay, I don't know why it's, this slide is like this, but if you have your, your workbook, okay, it's page three and it, I just dropped the page, it's okay. It looks like this, it's got a circle in the middle and five boxes, okay? So if you don't have your printout, just take a piece of paper, draw a circle in the middle and five boxes with dotted lines to the middle, okay? okay. So we're gonna do this little activity. This will help you envision your big life. So on each of the five rectangles, <laughs> you're gonna write a person or a cause that you care about. So maybe like on mine, I have pay off all student debt. And when I'm talking about all student debt, I'm talking about my student debt because I just went back to school a couple of years ago and finished my degree. So I have new student debt that I'd already paid off once. And I have three kids that have student debt. So that's in one of my boxes. That's something that's important to me. Uh, maybe you still have kids at home. Maybe it's getting them through school debt free. If you have younger kids, maybe that's your, one of your big whys, your big, you know, something that's important to you. Um, so this goal is for the whole year or for the whole life? For your whole life. Something whole you life. want. Something you want. Like if it's, you can look at it from a year. You can look at it, you know, for, you know, getting your kids through school debt free is obviously not a one year thing. You're probably not going to put right. that aside one year. Uh, something else I have on mine is a Christmas vacation to take my whole family because my kids are all grown. My baby's 23. Um, so I have spouses involved in stuff now too. Um, so to take all nine of us on like a Christmas vacation, whether that's to Disney or on a cruise or, to, you know, somewhere. And I have like, so that's one of my boxes. And then I have travel as I choose. I like, I like to travel. So, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. We'll get to vision boards and we'll see that. But I like to travel. So I want to be able to go when and where I want to go. And then I have buy two rental properties. So mine's kind of a combination. Mine is kind of a, I would say that this particular time when I did this one with another class, this is probably a two year, a two to three year goal. Um, buy two rentals. Because who knows about the best deals in real estate? Real estate agents. So, you know, if you go to a listing appointment and there's a great investment property, Get yourself to a position it's at where you can say, well, you know what? I'll just buy it, you know. And then that, boy, that takes the pressure off of a seller of having to get the house ready to clean and show and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then I have, in my other box, I have pay off all my personal debt. So, you know, my house, my car, my credit cards, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so for each one of those things, you're gonna write each thing, something in each box, and then you're going to associate a dollar amount. Um, you know, what impact do you wanna have on that? Some people have put in there that they like, you know, dog rescue, and they wanna be able to donate X amount of dollars a year to the dog rescue or um, something like that. You know, getting your kids through school. See, like on this one, it's, Austin Pets Alive, donate a cat habitat on this slide. You can see that part. Sarah and Hunter, those are her kids. Get them through school debt-free. I hope she's sending them soon into a state school for that. Um, mom and dad, she wants to pay off this person. This wants to pay off their mortgage. And I can't remember what's on the other two sides. 
But anyway, so write down some, a, a cause or people that are important to you, what it is that's important about that, and then how much in your estimate that would be that you need to earn or make to be able to mark that box off. Okay. Debbie, I, I, know, I, know, I know someone else asked this, but uh, for us as new agents, is this for the first year, the goal for the first year, or you, you can do it? Or you can do it. I would probably do it um, for either like a one to two year, probably. Okay. okay. Like I think when I did this one that I was just reading off of, I think I was thinking like two years. I mean, some of those things I want to do this year, like I want to take the kids on Christmas vacation in 2022. But I did this back, I probably did this one two or three months ago. Okay. So, so I was probably already thinking towards 2022 when I did this. Okay. So take a, about five minutes and kind of write that down and write down how much you would think that would each one of those boxes, how much money you need for each one of those boxes. Okay. 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 Thank you. Mm -hmm. Give you a couple of minutes. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Okay, everybody got that? Got your five circles, five rectangles filled out. So now you're gonna take that dollar amount that you put in those five rectangles and you're gonna add it all up. Mine does not add up right, I can tell you that. 250, 350, yeah, it does. 354, seven, eight. I think I rounded it off. Oh, no, I didn't. I just changed one. Okay. Anyway, so you add up all those numbers, and that's what goes in your middle. <clears throat> so some things, these are, sometimes these things require your time. So make sure you, you know, if you need to spend time, 
then budget that as well. So basically, here you go. The, the rectangles represent your big life because we always talk about living a big life. And then the center circle is your goal, okay? So these are the things that you're gonna have to set a goal. <laughs> achieve it okay aha uh -huh. somebody wants to share something that's on their in their big life <clears throat> so it's about the one we um we already got or we are planning what what you just filled out um i just filled out about my loans and my um vacation Okay. my daughter's school yeah those are all very worthy things to have a big life about life right. by design not by default yeah okay so let's talk about how we get to that goal how we get to that number somebody want to share what that number in the middle is anybody got a number in that circle mine came to 106 uh 206 thousand there you go Two hundred and six, because <laughs> I got to pay off my house and my car. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Anybody else got a number in the middle they want to share? Um, I got one forty-seven five hundred. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, I kind of told you what the things were in my boxes. Mine came to nine hundred thousand. Oh wow! Hence, hence why it's not a one-year plan. <laughs> it's a two to a three-year plan. Some okay. of these things I can take care of in a year. You know, I can make the money to go on a vacation, take everybody on a vacation this Christmas. It's December. I got 11 months. Mm -hmm. Right. Make $25,000. And I really don't need $25,000. It just depends on what we decide to do. Originally, I was thinking about taking everybody to, everybody to Disney World. Mm, I'm kind of backing off of that. We may go on a cruise, you know. So who knows? I might be able to do that for $10,000. But still. I want to budget $25,000, so if I decide to take everybody to Hawaii, we can do that. Um, okay, so let's move on to the next. So now let's understand the goal. So where does it go? Where does it go? So the first thing you have to understand is how your commissions work. You know, many, lots of new agents get the check for their first closing and pocket it all. And it's like, wow, it's crazy. I got a check for $6,000 or I got a check for $4,000. That's awesome. I mean, most of us, when we worked for corporate America, didn't get a paycheck, you know, every week for $4,000. You know, if we did, we'd probably still be in corporate America. Um, and then you're in trouble down the line, though. So let's talk about where the money goes and how much is actually going towards your goal. And these are real general numbers and they're just an example, okay? So they vary and especially if you're on a team. Okay, so let's see here. So where does it go? Let's see, what is it? It's not... First, if you're on the seller side of the transaction, half the commission goes to the buyer's agent. So you list a $100,000 house, which there aren't any anymore, but that's easy math. So 6%, because your seller agreed to pay 6%, that's $6,000, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, but half of that is actually going to the buyer's agent. So you really are only making $3,000, okay? So, and if you're on a team, then that's even different. But are any of y'all on a team? No. You're an individual, you're individual. Okay. Yes, so we'll talk about it from team. And we lost Michaela. She got bored, I guess. Um, so, okay. So, and then once you have your half, about a third of that goes towards your cap. Okay. That's the part the broker gets. If you're on that 80 20, I think, but are y'all all on the 80 20? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. It used to be 70, 30, now it's 80, 20. So, so that 20% goes to the market center and your royalties. <clears throat> so then after you pay the market center, another third should go back into your business. This needs to cover your marketing, your operating expenses, like your monthly bill, signs, your car, your phone, anything else you need to conduct and grow your business. Okay. 
And then you get your part with a caveat. You have, you have, this is your take home, but in there you need to put aside for your taxes. Right, Maria? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, ask the tax lady. Please put it away for your taxes. Um, religiously, you don't want to have a year's worth of work wiped out because you didn't plan and you do your taxes and then you owe ten thousand dollars or something. I mean, um, I that's one of my things on my list today is to pay off the IRS for 2018 today mm. because I owed not a lot. It was like my first full year in real estate, and I didn't have first year I didn't have any W two income or I didn't have any money held out anywhere. And um, so I ended up owing a little bit of money. And so I've been on a payment plan with the IRS for three years now, but it's about to get paid off. So anyway, so uh -huh, so I have, a, I have a question. So, yeah. so you have a debt on IRS? Oh, no, I mean like a tax, you owe tax. To IRS? I owe tax for IRS for 2018 because I didn't have it to pay when I did my taxes. For for the real estate or from the for real estate, job. yeah, for real estate. But I heard like we have to do it um, like every other four week. I mean, four like quarterly. Quarterly, mm -hmm. you are supposed to pay self employment tax quarterly. Um, oh, so that's different from the tax. It is your tax. It's the same. Maria, you want to explain okay. that? It, well, <laughs> yes. You you kind of estimate. You're saying like, yeah. I usually tell my clients to wait until the second year of the business to, to set up the payment plan uh, because then you base your quarterly payments on whatever you did the first year. Let's say, let's say at the end of, uh, this one was your first year and at the end of the year, you have to pay $1,000. So you divide that on four payments. So you send every quarter, you send $250 to the IRS next year. Oh, okay. And uh, and uh, and usually there's vouchers like tax preparers could give you like a voucher for you to send like a bill to the IRS. Okay. okay. And it's accumulating there, so you're prepaying the IRS your taxes. Oh, okay. So at the end of the year, you put that you already paid, let's say a thousand dollars. So be yes. like if they took money out of your check, if you worked. exactly, mm -hmm. it's kind of the same thing. Yes. You're paying it up front or ahead mm -hmm. of time. Ahead of time. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So Thank we won't you. talk about Debbie's taxes right now. Okay. <laughs> Debbie, I, I have one question right now that I've been thinking about the my well, it's of the subject, I guess. But um, what are you using to keep your? Do you how do you track your miles? Do you have a do you have a special system for real estate? Um, no. You, you you're not I try tracking. to do business. I try to do some sort of business from the time I leave my house until I go home. Oh, okay. So and do that. that. So I just pretty much come the end of the year, I maybe take 80% of the miles I put on my car. Oh, okay. But you don't I have don't, it. Exactly. We, you, we don't, you don't, we don't want to talk about my taxes, Maria. I just said that. <laughs> well, I just said I that. We don't want to talk about how Debbie does her taxes. My daughter <laughs> is an accountant, as an accountant, and she uh -huh. has fits with me all the time. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I can I've do been it thinking. either paper you can hit your trip meter on your car you know uh -huh. going uh -huh. out um you know there's yeah. lots of ways to track it i don't have there's apps that you can use that will track it and track every time you get in the car and then you mark it business or personal I and we can also save the the receipts that uh for the repair and tires yeah, and repairs. All. yeah you can do that it usually maria can agree or disagree with me I have found that it's usually better just to take the per mile deduction. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's, it's just it's easier to track better. how many miles it usually comes out to more money as it, a deduction. Yes. yes, it does. Because uh, I knew you don't you, you cannot claim both. You either claim yeah. your mileage right. or you can or you can claim your actual expenses. So that would be your receipts. But it's a lot better than miles. Um, okay. um but it's so why I'm like since the beginning, I've been thinking I need to track my miles because I know about that. And I'm like, I haven't done it. I haven't really yeah. done it. Yeah. So, so. Yeah. Okay. So moving on. So let's get real and get paid. Okay. So if the average sales price is $300,000, which in Fort Worth, it's not quite there yet, but it's getting there really quickly. The average sales price in Fort Worth is about 270, I think at this point. Oh, okay. Um, 
So, but let's just take 300,000 because it's easier math. So the average commission, the 3% is $9,000, okay? So you're, th these numbers are based on a different, ours would be a little different. Our total in our market center is 15,000 because you have $12,000 for your market center company dollar, which is your 20% that you're paying in. And then $3,000 that goes to Keller Williams International, okay? So our total is 15,000, not 30,000, thank goodness. I'd be looking for a new broker. Um, anyway, so that's, once you hit that, then you make 100% of your commissions after that. So once you do, at 20%, it takes about $2 million in production. So take that $300,000 house, you would need three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, about seven, about seven transactions at $300,000 okay. Okay, to, to cap for the year. So anything after seven, then you're gonna make 100% minus $50 because the market center takes a $50 transaction fee for you know doing all the paperwork and everything. And you do, and you get that until you hit your anniversary date, which is the first of the month after the of the month after you join. So I joined in July, so my rollover date is August first every year. Okay, so let's talk about some transaction goals here, and this is on page somewhere. Phase five? Phase five, yeah. It, we just did the top half kind of in the bottom. Now we're going to talk about the bottom half. So you're going to fill in what's your net income goal. How much money do you want to make after you pay your taxes, after you pay your expenses? Okay. So let's just say $100,000 is a, is a good goal. Okay. Um, and then in B, you're gonna put 15,000, not 30,000. Okay. And then C, your business expenses are not gonna be $50,000 your first year. Um, what falls in that category? That's how much you pay out for lead generation, which honestly, you shouldn't be paying anything out for lead generation. You should be on the phone. You should be on the phone, outdoor knocking, so you might have a little bit of expense for lead generation if you have to print flyers and things, if you're gonna go door knock, but phone calls don't cost you anything. Walking doesn't cost you anything to go door knock other than flyers to put out. Um, you don't have any salaries, you don't have an assistant yet or anything. Uh, education, because you do have to do, in your first two years, you have to do your SAE, which is basically like three more courses like you did to get your license, okay? three more of those 30 hour courses plus your legal one and legal two and probably three hours of contracts i don't know how that works now with that change so anyway so take those three add those together so how much do you want to make how much is your company dollar and how much are your business expenses so for this example on the screen it's 180 but ours would be not that much. So I have like 12,500 in my, in my expenses. Cause I have an office in the building. So I have to pay office rent. You have your 90, your hundred dollar office bill every month. So that's $1,200 right there. Plus stamps. If you mail things out, stamps or business expense, um, postcards, if you order postcards and send those out. So I would estimate as a new agent, I think I used to put um, $300, $300 is probably a good business expense. That's a hundred, that's $200 on top of your office bill okay. for expenses okay. like postcards and flyers and anything like that that you do, any kind of mm -hmm. event you put on. I mean, you know, and so $300, that's $3,600 for the year. So if you wanted to make a hundred, 15, that's 115, 118, 600. So D would be like $119,000. So if our average 
let's say our average GCI, new, starting out, unless you just get lucky, your average price point's probably not gonna be $300,000 off the bat. So let's take that 119,000. Well, let's see here, 275 times 3%. Let's use $8,000 is our average GCI in Boxy. So if we have $119,000 divided by $8,000, you need to do 14 tra 15 transactions to hit your goal. So does everybody understand how we got there? Um, yes. OK. So, and you can do this. I mean, you can hold on to this form and you can sit down and figure it out. And this is in, if you like, come next fall, we'll do business planning again and we'll have a similar form in our business planning session where you're gonna fill in how much money do I wanna make? Okay, these are my expenses. This is how much I really have to gross, my total GCI, your gross commission income. Um, and then you'll figure out, you know, what your average is. And it'll tell you how many how many transactions do you need to do the next year in order to hit the goal that you're setting. Okay. 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 Come on, move. There we go. Oh, so we were talking earlier. Somebody talked about command. So there's a goal setting guide in command. You just go. I forget how to get there. Um, but you can go into Kelly or into your command and go to goals and find set goals and it walks you through it. There's little boxes all down the left-hand side or the right-hand side rather. Oh, and, okay. it will tell you, and it will tell you, it, you put in all the numbers, the expenses, your cost of sales. Cost of sales is your cap. <clears throat> Anytime you see that your cost of sales is, is what it takes to cap. So $15,000 um, and then your expenses and how much you want your profit to be. And it'll ask you, you know, what your business makeup is. Do you take, are you half and half buyers and sellers? Are you more buy a lot of, a lot of agents when they're getting started or more buyer heavy? So maybe there are 75% buyers and 25% sellers. You know, anyway, you put that in. I told you I've been in five years. This is the first year. My, I need to update it because I've got a couple of deals closing this month. But when I looked at it, when we were doing business planning, I was dead on 50-50. I had done, when we did our business planning, I had done, I had closed 14, I think, and I was 50% sellers and 50%, I had seven and seven. Oh, well, that's good. Um, I mean, and this doesn't happen very often. It's usually, you know, it's not 50-50. I don't want to be 50-50. I would like to be 70-30 on the seller side uh, with my personal transactions and have a buyer's agent that's picking up those other buyers on our team okay so you know that's just how i'm trying to get there but anyway if you, when you get all this in and kelly in command it'll break it all down and it will tell you how many it's not showing it on here but when you get to the bottom of the screen it'll tell you how many appointments you need to go on every month oh okay how many buyer appointments how many seller appointments okay okay so you've got to do the right activities, which is lead generation. We don't want to be discouraging, but we need to, you know, you have to have some reality here to succeed. Not to scare you, but the failure, the fallout rate among real estate agents is like 82% in the first two years. Mm -hmm. So people that get their license, 82% of them never renew it two years later. So you want to do the right activities so that you get to renew your license and you want to renew your license because if you're, if it, it's a really expensive hobby, I've told people that for a long time, real estate is a very expensive hobby. <laughs> when you figure out your MLS dues, your NAR fee dues, you know, it's $2,000, $2,200 a year and super keys, MLS dues, you know, so it's an expensive hobby. You know, I could do a lot of other things with two that I could go on. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna say I'm a budget traveler. I'm more of a savvy traveler. I will look for the deal. 
So, I mean, $2,000 a year, I could go on two trips by myself. So, you know. Yeah, that's true. So, so it's an expensive hobby. So do the work so that you're making money to do it. Okay, how many times have we talked about the 80-20 principle? Everybody know what the 80-20 principle is? The Pareto principle? 20% of your effort will produce 80% of your results. So your 20% is your big rocks. Is making a to-do list going to help you get to your goal? No. Um, making a list and saying, okay, I need to do these three things to get to my goal. That's a that's good thing. Um, so it's like, you know, it just leads to 20%. I mean, 20%, you know, leads to 80. It works in all things. It really does. It's so strange. But 20% of the agents make, in, in real estate as a whole, not just in our office, real estate as a whole, real estate agents in the U.S., 20% of the agents make 80% of the money. Seriously. Well, like 9% make 90% of the money. I saw these stats at a seminar I was at. I was at here a while back. Um, so another way to identify 20% is to ask yourself the one central question to the one thing, which is we call it the, you'll hear it called the focusing question when we talk about the one thing. So what is the one thing you can do right now that would make everything else easier or unnecessary? That's what I was trying to say earlier and I couldn't spit it out. So if you're just getting started and you don't have any buyers or sellers, what's the one thing you can do right now that would make everything else easier or unnecessary? It's not a hard question. We've already talked about it. Get on yeah. the calls. <clears throat> making Get on social media, message people. Don't mm -hmm. bombard them. Okay, on social media, here's your million dollar tip for the day. When you get on social media and start messaging people, don't message them and say, and you haven't talked to them in 10 years, don't message them and say, hey, I'm in real estate now. Do you need to buy or sell? Don't do that. Don't do that. If you haven't talked to them in 10 years, go scroll, go, you know, stop their Facebook page a little bit and then send them a message and say, oh my gosh, I just saw your Facebook um, we haven't talked in forever. It looks like you're living a great life or something, or your kids are so cute, or they look so cute for Halloween, or that picture with Santa was awesome. Start a conversation. Because okay? if they, if you, if you message some, if you message me and we haven't seen each other or talked to each other in 10 years and you said, Hey, do you need to buy? I'm in real estate now. Do you need to buy or sell? No, that's my answer. No. <laughs> so but if you say hey i saw that picture of your dogs and they're so cute i might say oh thanks they're such a pain you know or something you know we can start a conversation and say oh yeah mine are too you know they're just you know prima donnas whatever she's got santa on her coffee cup <laughs> i love santa's favorite i have santa's or i need to go home and get them out so anyway so think about that always ask yourself what's the one if you don't know what to do you're sitting there one day and you're like, I, I don't have a clue. I don't know what to do. Ask yourself this question. What is the one thing I can do right now that would make everything else easier? Don't even make it unnecessary. It would just make everything else easier. Because when you do that one thing, you get into that 80-20 thing and 20% of your efforts will start producing 80% of your results. And then when the time comes, then you have, you find leverage to handle that other 80% of the tasks that need to be done. Okay. So things successful agents do every day, they lead generate for buyers and sellers. This is your 20%. So where the action is, it's where you get the best results. So that's what you, it's what, it's what we do. It's the first thing we do every day. If you don't lead generate, you don't have a business. I have a, a picture up in another office one day. I was in there doing something and the title company made these little like fans with a card and it has Gary's picture on it with a kind of a 
he's kind of making a scowl at them. And in the bubble, it says, what do you mean you didn't lead generate today? So <laughs> Gary will tell you, you have to lead generate every day. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So there's a couple of different ways we have at Keller Williams to help you track your goals and track what it is that you need to be doing. And one of those is a 411, which you see right here. The other one that a lot of us use is called a 135, and you can't really see that here. It's kind of the same thing. So we're going to talk about the 411 because it's what's in the, the book or what's on the slide. So 411, you're going to put your annual goals. So we kind of said that back on that little worksheet we did. So let's say you said you were going to make 100,000. Well, what that number came up to be. So if our annual goal is to make 120,000, that's what goes up there. Oops. Back. Okay. So uh, put, uh, and I'm sorry, I have a question. So uh, is this on command as well? Yeah, you can find it on command. You can probably find it, if, you know, I can email it. if. I can have Colby email it out to everybody or, you know, just- Yes, yeah, that would or, be nice. That would be nice because yeah. I, I really need to work on this. Yeah, yeah. This is something that we can't really do. I mean, if we were here in class, I would make us sit down and do it all. But mm -hmm. um, it's just one of those things we're just gonna kind of go through it. So right. you put your annual goal. See, I have two different ones. Like mine has year at the top. It says annual goals and it says year. So it has 2021 written on it there. Um, but you could put your annual goals. You could put, you can do this two ways. I'll just tell you that. You can do okay. it by dollar amount or you can do it by transactions, whichever way works for you. So if your annual goal, if you figured out on that little sheet that you needed to do 18 transactions to hit your goal or 15 or whatever it was when you did your, your math on that page. And if you did the math with us and you did the same thing we were talking about, then go back and take your calculator and figure out what that really is for y'all. And I would use $7,500 as your average commission. Okay. Um, so figure out how many transactions you need to do. So maybe it's 24, maybe it's 36. Put that down there. And then you divide that by 12 to get how many transactions you need to do a month. So if it's 36 for easy math, that's, let's do 24. That's a little more realistic for a new agent. So if your annual goals are 24 transactions, then you have a monthly goal of two, of two transactions every month. So let's say that your conversion rate, which is something else we haven't talked about, but maybe it's been talked about in another class. I don't remember. Your conversion rate is like how many phone calls or contacts do you have to make to get the appointment, okay? So if I have to call 20 people to get one appointment, then if I'm going to get four appointments in a week, then I'm going to have to call 80 people based on those numbers, okay? Now, okay, so now I have the appointment. So how many appointments do I have to go on to get a signed listing, okay? And that kind of varies from person to person, you know, but on average, I would say that I signed 70% of the listing appointments I go on. Um, or 75, we'll choose 75, that's easier math. So if I'm going on four appointments in a week, then I'm gonna sign three buyers or sellers, whichever it is that I'm working with, okay? So, but your annual goal, so you have 24, then you have two, two for the month, we'll say, and then so your weekly goals would be one, 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 and one, just because you're probably looking at about a 50% conversion rate on your appointment to listing or appointment to buyer signed. Okay, so your weekly goals, go on one appointment a week. How hard is that? Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound very hard. I have a, a are any of y'all familiar with Tom Ferry? You heard no. of Tom Ferry? Okay, Google Tom Ferry. He's a bit, he's a real estate coach. Uh, he has a whole company of real estate coaches. He has a podcast, he has a YouTube show. He and I, I, that's who my coach is. He's not my coach, but one of his coaches is my coach. Um, and he told us at our convention that we had in August 
October, October to go on. He challenged us to go on one appointment a day. Now, I'm, I have not hit that yet, apparently. I'm not going on one appointment a day right now, and I'm two months past that or a month. Anyway, so, but, you know, his thought is, if you're not going on one appointment a day, what are you doing? Are you doing anything to grow your business if you're not going on one appointment a day? I mean, maybe some days you go on two appointments and not one on the other day. I mean, life happens. I'm not going to tell you that. I'm not going to tell you. So anyway, so you're going to fill out this. There's a digital copy a copy in the toolkit. If you have access, if you found on Connect, the Ignite toolkit. So if you Google, um, if you go find the toolkit on KW, if you go into Command and go into Connect mm -hmm. at the top, you can Google Ignite toolkit and all the forms that we use throughout Ignite are in there, okay? So don't lose focus. Remind yourself why you're doing what you're doing. I can't read that quote because the Zoom is on top of it. Oops, and I'm gonna have to go back now because I can't see it. Accountable people achieve results others can only dream of. That's just another quote from the one thing. Um, so keep, your, keep the eye on the prize, you know, like they say. Page eight, it says. So it's affirm your big life, turn to page eight in the participant guide. What's on page eight? I don't know. Oh, it's just affirm your big life. I haven't done that page. Okay, so it's about affirmations. Um, you know, I'm making this call. Example is I'm making this call to provide for my parents and paying off their house because they supported and provided for me and I want to enable them to retire with confidence. So that goes back to those circles that we wrote. One of the things on the circle was paying off her parents' house. So her example of her affirmation that she was going to say to herself before she made her calls is I am making this call so that I can provide. So, you, you know, there's a formula on page eight there. It says, I'm, whatever you're doing, I'm going on this appointment. I am making these calls. I am door knocking to provide for my children because by doing this, the money will let me provide a home for them. It will let me put them through school without debt um, because I want to enable them to go to college without having the worry of student debt hanging over their head, whatever it is. There's the formula in the middle of that page. And then it has blanks for you to fill that in later. Mm -hmm. I've never done this page in that apparently. So, well, you have found an act, uh, accountability partner somewhere in the office or in class. Um, page nine. That's just ahas. Models. Okay, the other thing that I will tell you about setting goals is you need to have them in front of you. You need to be able to see them. So whether that's a picture of your kids or there's a bunch of us that like to do vision boards. This is last year's vision board. And if you were here, you could see it a lot better. Yeah. It had the year and it had a 36 in the middle. That was my transaction goal for this year. Didn't hit it. I just told y'all I did 16 mm. or 17, but I'm still making more money than I've ever made. So that's good. It has a car on it. I bought a new car three months ago. Um, has a pile of money. I haven't made a pile. I made a lot of money this year, but it's not this big of a pile. There's a new <laughs> kitchen down here. Kitchen isn't done yet. Didn't get done. Sometimes it didn't happen. I was going to read more. There's some books down here at the bottom you can't see. There's some books. I was going to read more this year. That hadn't happened. And then I have all my travel spots that I wanted to go over here. Right. And so, so you're I'm making a goal. Yeah. yeah. So you're making a goal to, to read the books too. Yeah. Not those books necessarily, but it was a picture of a bunch of books. Oh, wow. That's so good. So, anyway, and then there was a bunch of travel on there. There was a there were some palm trees. There was Las Vegas. There's um, the Eiffel <laughs> Tower. Did, did that too, Maria. There's, there's mm -hmm. lots of things on here. There's a resort in Cancun. Well, I didn't go to Cancun, but I did go to Cabo. 
<laughs> so and I went to Vegas and I went to Florida. Wow. So, so I did that. So that's last year's board or this year's board. Here's next year's. It's not finished really. So my kitchen is still on here because I haven't done the kitchen yet. Um, 36 transactions. There we go again. We're going to try it again this year. Um, I had this like patio thing on here because I'd like to like redo my patio and make it a lot more cozy where I really want to go out there. Um, and look, there's more beaches. <laughs> where does Debbie like to go? Debbie likes to go to the beach. <laughs> Debbie would live at the beach if she could. <laughs> Just broke something in here. Oh. Um, well, it's a it's a it's a little personal but i'm just i just wonder so in your view like do you focus more on the goals like you want to pay off your debt or you know like whatever you gotta pay or you focus uh like vacation or i have and i haven't put that on there and i had i actually had a one-on-one -on -one call with tom ferry uh about a month ago and he was we were showing i was showing him and he was like i want to see you put pay off some debt he said how much debt do you have um and I honestly six months ago I had a lot less than I have now um but anyway that's beside the point um so he's like so he made me add it up and I was like okay with the house it's this much without the house it's this much he says I want to pay off some debt put that on the board pay off some debt and Stacy, if y'all have met, y'all will meet Stacy next week. Yeah. If you have yes. Okay. Because she's, oh yeah, she does agents, elevating agents. So if y'all come to that or anything. And Stacy will be teaching contract to close next Saturday. Okay. Um, so she puts debt free. She puts a debt thing on her vision board because that's her and her husband have a goal to be debt free. You know, and they're, they're making progress. They're, they're tracking it down. Um, so yeah put things on your board that are important some of them need to be fun you know i'm just gonna tell you some of them need to be fun because if you're always working to pay a bill life's not very fun life is about way more than just paying the bills right uh, it's you know bold is it's business objective life by design so design your life so that you can live the life that you want to live True. i mean it's like i mean what is it um Oh, what's his freaking name? The money guy. Um, geez, I can't believe I forgot his name. Who? Rob? The financial Dad. peace guy. Oh. Um, Dave Ramsey. You know, he says live like live. His thing is to get your debt paid off. Dave Ramsey's all about people getting out of debt. Um, you know, live a life now that nobody else will live because a lot of people don't want to live in the way that lets them get out of debt because right, right. living a life to get out of debt means you're not going on vacations all the time. I mean, you budget for right. it, you budget for a vacation, probably not three, you know, mm -hmm. it's about living on a budget and getting your debt paid off so that you live a life like no one else will so that you can live a life that no one else can yeah, that's so true. And what about like you work the whole life and pay the debt and debt and then and then you die. You die. Right, right. And you didn't get to enjoy your life. So mm -hmm. enjoy your life, you know, build build a business that will let you live a life by design. Design your life, guys. Design yeah, your life. Yeah, that's so true. That's uh, what they say, uh, time blocking. <laughs> oh, I'm not I'm going backwards apparently. Time blocking. Yeah, time blocking is important. Debbie, I have a question. Um, yep. you, you were talking about uh, your coach, that one of Tom Ferry's coach uh -huh. is your coach. So uh, did you hire a coach right at the beginning? Uh, like an, a coach okay. outside when I first, the office? When I first started, I was in coaching here at the office. Okay. I will tell y'all just, and I know we've had some changes in that program and we're working on some other things. But yeah, you either need to get into coaching here or I think... Don't hold my feet to the fire on this. I think we're going to have a mentorship program launching probably early next year. Okay. Uh, we can like work with an agent one on one um, okay. for a fee. Basically, everything always comes with a fee. Um, right. But we can do the launch coaching here, where you pay, you know, a percentage of your commission. Um, 
10 percent 10 percent um and you have access to gene to help you get through launch coaching and he's teaching y'all what you need to know to get appointments and to how to fill out the contracts and everything like that um that's what i did for the first couple of years that i was in here i did the launch coaching and then we had we had another coach who left mm -hmm. back in the spring but they're looking for a new coach we're looking for another <clears throat> coach to take her place okay. um, and so there's a productivity coach available here I did. I just recently went with the Tom Ferry coaching, which we have maps coaching at KW. Same kind of thing. I just like Tom Ferry. Um, okay. I probably, you know, that's another thing. Uh, you know, that's but that's um. But when you go into like a maps coaching or a Tom Ferry coaching or a Jeff Glover, there's lots of these coaching companies out there. It's a. It, it adds to your business expenses because it's a monthly payment. Okay. No matter whether you're closing transactions or not, at least with launch coaching, you're only paying as you close a transaction. Okay. And probably the same thing. And the same thing with the productivity coach when we get a new one. Okay. Or the, mentor, or the mentorship, you're only paying when you have a transaction versus okay. signing up with like a business coach, like through Tom Ferry or Maps or any of those things where you're paying a chunk of money every month, whether you have a deal or not. Okay. So okay. I would recommend starting out with what we offer in the office. Right. Okay. Thank you. But yeah, coaching is important. It's very important. Gary Keller will tell you that. Scripts, learn your scripts. This is why you learn them to lead generate, un uncover. You're going to un uncover the motivations of your sellers and buyers, identify their objections. Close deals. You're going to learn to speak in terms the customer understands, and it's going to build your confidence. When you're comfortable saying, when they say, well, will you do it for less than 6%? You don't want to stumble around and go, uh, 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 well, how much would you pay? <laughs> no, you need to know, you need to be able to explain why it's 6% and why. And they, so they say, so Maria, Yes. So you said you talked to another agent and they said they would do it for 5%. Just say yes. Mm, oh, yes. Okay. So that other agent is, was it hard to get them to offer 5%? Did you, did you uh, yeah, I mean, no, they, they were pretty easy. They agreed right away. Okay. So that agent, what you're telling me is that agent is very willing to give up their own money so how easy is it going to be for them to give up your money when he's negotiating on your behalf? Ooh, that's a good question. I didn't thought about. <laughs> yeah. So I'm here, you know, what kind of marketing is he not going to do? I just showed you my whole marketing package. What part of this is he not going to be able to do because he's only charging you 5%? Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah. So you just got to learn to be able to speak in these things. You got to get your scripts down. So that when they say, well, you do it for 5%, no. And here's why I'm not going to do it for 5%. Mm, yeah. you know? and, and if they keep on, I'm like, okay. You know, in this market, I might, I mean, I would, I had, well, I'll, I'll give you an example. So I went on an appointment in October, I guess. Yeah. The end of October, they had been a for sale by owner. Um, they had it on the market for sale by owner on Zillow for two weeks. They had a whole lot of phone calls, but nobody had come to see the house. They were overpriced because they listened to everybody around them that was not a real estate person that said, oh, you can pretty much get whatever you want for your house right now. Mm -hmm. So they'd overpriced. Okay. So I went out and met with them. They were happy to meet with me, met with them. And that was one question he asked me. He said, would you do it for less than 6%? And I was pretty much like, no. And here's why. Part of this goes to my broker, part of it goes to Uncle Sam, part of it's what I get to market your house with and pay my bills, okay? Now I did make them a deal. I said, I'll tell you what I will do. If I bring the buyer, so if I found a buyer for your house, I'll only charge you 5% because I'm getting both sides of it at that point. Right. Yeah, okay. I'm getting both sides. So. I'm more than happy at that point to, 
and they weren't buying right now. Sometimes there's some agents that say, okay, I will, I will, I'll discount it on the second transaction. So like if they're selling and buying, which if they're buying, the seller's paying you. So that's not really, but anyway, there's agents that will work it out that way. It's like, okay, if you're buying and selling with me, then I will discount like a half percent or something on the list, yeah, okay. you know, okay. but I, I don't do that as a rule. And I've never really gotten a lot of pushback. Okay. And probably the only deal, the only listing I didn't get, I bet that's, pro well, two listings, but one was a jerk. And I, I can say that because it's my nephew-in-law. Uh, <laughs> he's just an idiot. He doesn't know what he did to himself. Um, anyway, um, so I've never had a lot of trouble, honestly. Okay presenting my value and you just have to lay it out there for them right you just have to lay it out there you know i'm not making you know yes it's six percent but and yes your house is three hundred thousand dollars but i'm not making eighteen thousand dollars to sell your house right, yes, right. you're paying eighteen thousand dollars but nine thousand that is going to the agent that's bringing a buyer to us mm -hmm. and we need that person i mean yes we could we could i mean our office has a policy of not paying the buyer's agent less than three percent but if you look in MLS, you can see a lot of buyer's agents. The commission is less than 3% on them. Yes. Open doors paying 2.5%. A lot of other yes. agents pay 2.5%. Oh, and that's okay. probably because they're either they're greedy and they're keeping that other half percent for themselves or they're negotiating and they're taking the listing for less. They're discounting the listing and they're passing that on to the buyer's agent instead of eating that themselves. Mm. So you are more than welcome to discount yourself, but if you take a listing for 5% with Keller Williams Fort Worth or Johnson County, know that you need to pay the buyer's agent 3% and you're getting 2%. Oh, okay. I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. it's kind of a policy and they said they were going to do it and then they never really announced it, but I do know that it is kind of. Oh, policy. okay. It's kind of fair for it's the other. It's fair, yeah. Don't don't discount the buyer's agent. They yeah. didn't do anything wrong, right? Yeah, so, that's good. But yeah, but just learn to present your value. Work on your unique proposition value. Yeah, your uh, value proposition. Your value proposition. I can't even say it right. So, uh, Debbie, I have one question. Um, you were talking about like a property that ex that, that that it has been in the market for a long time. Uh, I have um, there's like a a uh, property a block from my house i can actually see it right now from here yeah like, yes, it's from zillow and uh, it's been sitting there for like a couple of months or even more and it hasn't sold is there uh -huh. anything that you would do like have, i've been thinking like it's it's overpriced and i actually went and saw it and i bet and i bet they're only are they paying three percent or are they paying two and a half percent i think it's three percent but oh. it hasn't sold and it's is weird it overpriced I think it's overpriced. Well, they're so gonna, Zillow, you know, Zillow got out of the home buying business, right? Right. Yeah. Story a couple of weeks ago, a month ago. It, and I read it, a story it, yesterday that they, they full on expect to take a loss on these houses that they're selling because they paid too much for them. So if you right. have a buyer for that house, I would keep showing it and then just send a, not a low ball offer, but a fair offer. I mean, if it's overpriced, don't mm -hmm. make an offer for them price price run the comps for the neighborhood and find out what the right price is for that house mm -hmm. if you have a buyer yeah. and yeah write the offer <laughs> for you know if it's listed at three hundred thousand and it's really only a 275 house mm -hmm. I'm, and it's been on the market for months you say now yeah i think it's been i would run it for 250 if it's priced at 300 and it's been on the market for months i'd write an offer at 250 if i had a buyer for it <laughs> i'd say oh, okay. we need to offer like 250 and see what they do I mean, mm, yeah. here's, here's my theory on that one. You have an open door or a Zillow house that's been on the market for two or three months or more. Mm -hmm. You can write that offer. I mean, if you have a buyer that wants to make an offer, I'm going to advise my buyers to make an offer that's lower than what they're asking if it seems like it's overpriced or if it's just been on the market for a really long time. Because the worst thing they're going to say is no. Mm -hmm. They're just going to reject your offer. And you're going to start over and make a new offer. The other thing they're going to do is they're going to counter. So mm -hmm. if they're listed at 300 and you offer 250, they may come back and say, no, we need 280. 
Mm -hmm. And then you can still counter some more. And he's like, no, the comps really don't support that. And you just withdraw your offer if you can't come to a agreement. Right. Yeah. And go on. Right? Yeah, okay. Okay. I, I just didn't know, like, can, can you go on? Well, no, because they have I mean, I know, them, I the markets. It's, it's so funny. I was just talking about this yesterday. I have a buyer under contract and we actually had to negotiate repairs. There were some repairs the house needed. It needed a new roof. It needed a couple other things. Mm -hmm. uh, and for like the last year, it hasn't been that way. It's like, okay, it's kind of take it or leave it. You know, right, there hasn't right, been a lot right. of negotiation. You guys are not going to know how. Y'all are going to, that's a whole another skill set you're going to have to learn as this market changes is how to write a repair amendment and how to negotiate those repairs okay. with sellers when you have the buyer or when you have the seller, how to negotiate with the buyer that, you know, that's a whole nother skill set that we haven't really had to use. Mm. I, I looked at all of me yesterday and I said, I'm actually negotiating repairs. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. Yeah. A long time. I haven't so things are changing. Yeah, it's changing. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. When you have a five hundred thousand dollar house that needs a brand new roof because it's seventeen years old, I'm not <laughs> giving in. I am not giving right. in. Well, will the set? Will the buyers pay half? No, they don't own the house yet. They are not paying half of the new roof that you need. No. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. So I'm just me. Sometimes. Interesting. <laughs> I really do fight for my buyers. Now, if I had the seller, if I was the seller on that, I would be pushing the same thing. Like, no, we're not getting a new roof. This yeah, one, I think just, people are this overpricing. This one's just obvious. Right. A lot of people oh, are overpricing thing. nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's probably priced about right for the neighborhood it's in. And it's a five bedroom, um, three and a half bath, four thousand, almost four thousand square feet. So um, it's a big house. But um, the funny thing on this one is the sellers are the agents. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's been a little. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, okay. Any more questions or ahas? Um, uh, no, I don't. I don't have any questions right now. So okay. Um, here, y'all want to take my phone number down in case you need it since you're not here and I didn't write it on the board. Yes, please. It is eight one seven. Four eight seven. Okay. Two four nine nine. Two four nine nine. 